Uh, hi, Professor Shields. Hello, Tyler. I'm currently working on a project, and I have a couple questions that I would like some help with. And I'm here to help you. Okay, so my first question is, is the fetal and placental weight function in the original function, the derivative function, or the second derivative function? All right. So if we look at the Forbes data that it gives us, this, and then placenta is like in the middle. All right, so it looks about like that. The units that they give us is grams per day over the time day. So, um, you know, anything in the derivative has the uh, weight along with the time over time. So grams per day over day, that would be the derivative. Okay. My second question is, why is it important to have the function in a polynomial of degree 4 rather than a degree of 1? Okay, so when you get the equation out of Excel from this, it's y equals some number x to the 4, x to the 3rd, x to the 2nd, and so on. And a linear function, you know, there's no, um, exp there's no like exponential growth of it, so it's just, you know, mx plus b at that point. So by the shape of our graph that we're given from the Forbes data, obviously it's some kind of polynomial to some type of degree. It gives us the degree 4, so that's why linear wouldn't be a good fit, but degree 4 would be a perfect fit because we are in the fourth degree. Okay. So how do you find the inflection points for fetal and placental weight data? So, you take your function, and you take that to the second derivative, which would technically be the function's third, but be your second derivative. You take this equation, uh, once you get it in the second derivative for it, set it equal to zero, and it'll give you inflection points. And the fetus inflection points are nine one six six seven three seventy one ninety nine and then for the for the placenta it is one fifty two and two twenty three. Okay, and how would you interpret this? So the second derivative shows the point in which um, the derivative stops growing. So it would show the these points show when the fetus stops growing and when the placenta stops growing. Okay, thank you. So do these two inflection points occur during the same week? No, they do not. Uh, obviously, these are days, but if we were to convert it into weeks, the top one would be 28, this is 53 weeks, and then for the placenta, the top one's 15, and the bottom one's 32. Obviously, they're not even close to each other. Okay. Yes. Okay, so my next question is, given the derivatives, how do you find the original function of both placental and fetal weight at 112 days? Right. Thanks to our wonderful teacher, Dr. Ganolvi, he taught us that when you have the derivative in order to go in reverse, you just have to find the antiderivative, and that'll give you the original function of just weight over time. Okay, so what is the placental volume at zero days? So they gave us a chart for that. For the placental volume and basically at zero days the placenta would be zero millimeters because there was no time for it to grow and the fetus grows before the placenta does so it makes sense that the value would be zero okay so how do you find the inflection point for the placental volume data so same thing as we did with the Forbes data you know, they'll give us a pretty function. Uh, we still put it in the polynomial degree of 4 because it was still in 4. 
four. And um, you find the second derivative, set it equal to zero, and then you will be given inflection points. And how did you find that using the Forbes data? Oh, Forbes data, it's the same way. We already had the uh, equation from popping the graph into Excel. Right. Um, still in the polynomial fourth degree, set it equal to zero, and then you'll get inflection points. Is it possible to compare these two directly? Um, I'd say no, just because the placenta information from Forbes is grams per day, and the um, information from the chart that was given to us is volume per day. So, right. like, you'd get the same gist, but it might not be comparable because they're not in the same units. Okay. So what week does the inflection point occur in both sets of data? So for the Forbes placenta, we had 152.79 and 224.86. And then in the just going to call it volume placenta. We had 107.2 and then 223.88. Okay. So do both inflection points have the same time period? A little bit. Um, the the first weeks obviously don't match up, but these are both week 32 in uh, gastration. So right. they both have, the second inflection points happen at the same time. Okay. So what does this say about the data? Do you trust it? Um, it says that definitely at week 32 that both the grams of the placenta stop growing at the certain time and the uh, volume at the placenta also stops growing at week 32. Um, we could trust the data because it does line up, but I wouldn't just because, you know, you need more uh, trustworthy data. You can't just go off of two pages, especially when the units don't even match and expect okay. them to be workable. Right, okay. So what medical reasons do you think this entails? Like why, why is it the way it is? So, um, obviously the second one lined up, but possibilities of why the first ones don't is uh, there's always mutations or um, the fetus could start, the fetus starts forming before the placenta, so obviously the fetus would have a faster growth rate than the placenta would. And then the placenta grows faster, you know, once the fetus starts growing in order to catch up with it to provide it the nutrients that it needs. So it would be growing fa faster at that point. And then the placenta reaches a certain point, probably week 32, where it stops um, growing. So then uh, it would start to slow down while the baby continues to grow. And then after that, the baby would no longer have space to grow since the placenta is done, thus slowing down its growth there. Also in the um, Forbes paper, it said that Calcium content of the placenta increases, suggesting some arterial uh, degradation, which would slow down the growth rate while the baby obviously has the nutrients that it's feeding off the placenta, which would increase the growth for that. And yeah, those are all okay. the medical reasons that I could think of. Well, that's all the questions I have. So awesome. Thank you. No problem. I hope you do wonderful on your project.